Hello everyone. Today we are going to try to predict, using simple linear regression, the U.S. population from the year 1790 to the year 2000. As you can see, I have the year data here. I have the population data here. The numbers are huge because the years are in thousands and the population is in millions. So we have 281, 421, 1,906 million people in the year 2000. What we often do in regression is we will create another variable. Let's call the variable year, and we'll call it year one, and we'll call population, let's call it pop one. For the year, let's subtract 1700. We'll make the year 1700 zero, which will make our equations better. So this is equal to this number minus 1700. You see, when we do that, the year 1790 becomes the year 90. And if we drag this all the way down, our year 2000 becomes the year 300. I make this bold and right justify it. Now, when it comes to population, I'd rather have it in millions with maybe one or two decimals. I think that would be close enough for our approximation. I don't need to have it all the way seven to nine digits. So let me say, let me take the population and divide it by 100,000. Scratch that. Let me take the population and divide it by 1 million. And I will be able to then drag this down. I really don't want all those decimal places. I'd like it to be uniform. So let's reduce the decimal places even to one decimal place. So we see in the year 90, the population was 3.9. We really know that means 1790 and 3.9 million. I think that's close enough. The first thing we do in any simple linear regression, we highlight the data. The first column we highlight is usually will become the X and a second will become the y. Usually when we're using regression and one of the two variables is time, we use to use time to predict the other variable. In this case, the independent variable is time. We're using it to try to see if we can predict population. So let's go and see if we can do that. The first thing we want to do is look and see if there's a scatter diagram and a scatter diagram and see if it makes any sense. So we will got, want to go here and insert a scatter diagram. Let's look at the first one. It definitely has a linear shape. Now, not a linear shape, but it has a predictable shape. It's actually looks like it's exponential. Population tends to grow exponentially, but we're going to try to fit a linear model to it. Called U.S. population. Seventeen ninety to the year two thousand. Now, the easiest way to get simple linear regression to work is if I click on a graph. You would see in this area here, I've got a choice of all kinds of graphs. Here's one that has a f sub x. If I click on that, it actually gives me a regression equation right there. And I don't really need the key. I'll get rid of the key. And I'll take the regression equation up here, and I'll move the title over a little bit. One thing that I like to see in problems you turn into me is this is year. 
100 equals zero. So that tells us the year 1700 is zero. And this is population in millions. It's always good to label your graphs so that whoever's looking at it can understand. Now we see this line, our linear graph, goes well below zero. And of course we're not going to use that part. We're more interested in using this to predict it. If we look at the graph of the actual data, we see that it, of course, does grow exponentially and the line is straight, is what a line is. We're underestimating in this region, we're overestimating in this region, and we're underestimating again in this region. If we go on beyond the year 3000, which is the year 300, which is the year 2000, we will be probably underestimating reality, but we're only using simple linear regression. Here is our equation, 1.2889 times x, x being the year with 1700 being zero, times that the year, minus 156.65. That's our measure. And we have r squared equals 0.9198. That's actually a very good r squared. It says we're explaining 91.98% of the variation in the Y data, the population, using this model. This is R squared, or the coefficient of determination. We know for linear regression, we also want to know what the correlation coefficient is. Coefficient, and that is also called R. And we want to see what r is. Well, if we know what r squared is. Guess what r is? It is equal to the square root of r squared. So it's 0.9198. And we leave it this way as, and we don't need all those decimal places. We're not flying rocket ships to the moon. So it's 0.95. Nine. That means it's a very good linear fit. One is a perfect linear fit, so it's not quite perfect, but it's really good. And we're explaining a lot of the data, even though we know we're going to underestimate if we extrapolate out further. How what might we extrapolate out further? Here is the year. Let's go here and put year one. And let's take population one. And let's call it an estimate because that's what we're actually using the line to estimate. So my year is going to be 300. That would be the year 2000. And to each of those, I'm going to add one. So I'm going to say, let's predict it for year one, 2001. And let's take it to the current year. Well, let's even take it to the year 2020, which would be 320. Do I need the decimal places for the year? No, I don't. So let's eliminate those decimals. Now, what is my estimate of population? Well, it's equal to the year times the slope, which is 1.2889 minus the y-intercept, which is negative 156.65. That tells us, if we look at the intercept, that the intercept in the year 0 AD, it says the U.S. population should have been a minus 156.65 million. That is nonsensical. It's not something that it wouldn't be a meaningful y-intercept. Remember, when we fit this model, it's saying the model only is applies to this data range. Below the year 90 and above the year 300, we can't count on the model. We can use it to predict going forward, but we can't count on it. 
everything about this model, the R squared and the R apply to the highlighted area from the year 1790 to the year 2000. So let me take my U.S. population and extend it out. And let me also reduce that to one decimal place so it looks like the other data. Let me make this bold and let's justify it. So now we see that in the year, we think the population in, according to our model here, our prediction, in the year 2014 is going to be 248 million 100,000 and in the year 315 it's going to be 249 million 400,000. Those are estimates. It's probably not accurate because we know we're going to be underestimating it. But for a linear model this is the best we could do. If we want to make a better linear model we might consider only using the more recent data where the line is more linear. Let's see what happens if we try that. We would use the same approach. I would insert a scatter diagram. I would move the scatter diagram down here. Now you see it's much more linear. And if I go and add the same linear model to it, you see our R squared has even increased more. And the fit looks much better. This is US population. And what is the year 200? I'm, I have to add 1700 to it, so that's 1900 would be the year 200 would be 1900. 1900 to 100 years later, year 2000. I would add year 1700 equals zero. I would say U.S. population in millions. Population in millions again. Now, if we use this model, it will probably give us a better estimate of what the population will be like. Let's look at it. So let's use population estimate number two. So still pop one, but it's estimate two. And let's make that bold. And we're starting at the year two. I was still going to start at the year 300 and move forward. So what are we saying? Equals year times. Now what are we multiplying by? 2.019 minus 339.25. We see we're already 36,000, 36 million higher. Now, what is my estimate for 2014? It's 294,716. You could look this up on the internet and see how accurate we are. An estimate for 2015 would be 296,735. Let's reduce it to one decimal place so it looks like all the other ones. And that's how you do simple linear regression the easy way using scatter diagrams and using the functionality of chart tools, clicking down and choosing this tool. Thank you very much.